Hello, everybody. Welcome back to our five part mini series on Ayurvedic foundations. This is video four, and we're going to be speaking about the Ayurvedic doshas. Now, the Ayurvedic doshas is one of those concepts that um, really excite people, and often people come um, into Ayurveda or learn about Ayurveda through the doshas. And before we can get really stuck into the doshas and have a deeper understanding, you need to know the five elements. And that is what we spoke about yesterday. So make sure um, you watch the video on the five elements if you haven't already, and the doshas will make so much more sense. So the doshas are a concept to explain the energies that govern the mind body of an individual. Our prakruti dosha is the one that we are born with. It's like our Ayurvedic fingerprint. And our vikruti dosha is our current doshic state or our imbalanced state. So dosha actually means like imbalance. All of the doshas can be found in everybody. So we have all three doshas within us, but we just have them in different proportions in varying degrees. The three doshas are vata, pitta, and kapha, and each of the doshas is made up of two of the elements, and that's why it's really important to understand the elements for first. Now, each of the doshas actually have five sub-doshas as well. We won't be going into those five sub-doshas today because it would take a really long time, um, but we do go through this um, in the Ayurveda Alchemist program. So if you want to learn Ayurveda on a much deeper level, then yeah, reach out to me about the Ayurveda Alchemist program. So Vata is made up of ether and air, and it's the dosha of movement. Pitta is made up of fire and water, and it's the dosha of transformation. And Kapha is made up of earth and water, and it's the dosha of substance. Now that we have some insight into the five elements, we can determine our unique combination of these elements that influence our state of being. The elements that are creating disharmony and causing an imbalance, therefore which dosha is imbalanced. Ayurveda teaches us that if a dosha is increased beyond its original proportion, it can foster an environment where disease and mental challenges can develop. Your imbalanced state, as I mentioned, is called your vikruti dosha. So if you've ever done one of those dosha quizzes, which I have on my website, um, that is determining your current state of imbalance. So you will be getting your vikruti dosha. And the vikruti dosha can change because, as I spoke about yesterday when we were talking about the elements, they're influenced by your work, the environment that you're in, the weather, the food that you eat. So your dosha, your vikruti dosha can fluctuate. And even without doing a quiz, after learning about the dosha today, you might be able to determine what dosha for you is out of balance and what is your natural sort of set point dosha. And that is called your prakruti. And if you do want to go and do the quiz, then you're welcome to um, go and do the quiz on my website as well to see what that comes up with for you. So the Vata Dosha is made of the ether and the air elements and their body characteristics, they usually, they're either very like tall and lean or they can be really short and often have a bony structure. So this is the Vata type body type. Um, they can find it really difficult to gain weight and often have inconsistent metabolism. So they're prone to a lot of bloating and gas and constipation and dryness because of the, um, the air element, the ether element. You can also find that um, someone who has quite a lot of vata imbalance going on, they have very dry skin, like chafed lips. They can have really dry, uh, dry cracking joints because there's not enough lubrication in the body there. They often like to snack on light meals throughout the day. So they're, they're always snacking and they tend to go for light food um, like crackers and popcorn and all of that. But that only increases the vata imbalance, right? They usually have a very cold body temperature and they can often have really 
cool hands and feet. So sometimes they will experience like poor circulation. And generally they have a weaker immune system of the three doshas. They get very aggravated by the cold and windy weather, because if you remember air, ether, like that is what makes up the vata dosha. So if you find that you're in really windy weather and you're feeling like your thoughts are becoming scattered, you've started to become irritable, that's just your vata dosha being triggered. They're often really high energy people. So they'll be like really chatty. They're really bubbly. They're like, hey, how's it all going? And like they've got a million different thoughts and ideas, um, but they can fatigue really quickly. So I know I can be like this. I can be really out there and hey, love, you know, love to socialize and, you know, doing all of these presentations. But then after it, I can feel like really depleted because my I've like overdone my vata dosha. <laughs> Um, and often they can be quite intense, like they can come across as really, really intense, but then burn themselves out and then they, you don't see them for a while, they're <laughs> going to, to rebalance themselves. So they can, um, yeah, as I mentioned, be very talkative, very social and very creative. They like change and spontaneity and they're very flexible with their decisions. So they are the people that love to travel. They love to be those um, free spirits, so to speak. And they can have um, sometimes an impractical or abstract way of thinking. However, when they're in balance, they're really intelligent and they're really intuitive as well. They can suffer from anxiety, worry and nervousness because of that air element that is out of balance within the mind and the body. So when too much of that element is out of balance, you start to feel very anxious and a lot of flighty thoughts in the mind. The vata dosha also governs the central nervous system. So when our central nervous system is overstimulated, then the vata dosha is going to become um, out of balance as well. They can be very emotionally sensitive people. And just remember that even if you are find that you're more of a pitta kapha type, your vata can still go out of balance. So we can all suffer from these different um, imbalanced states because of the vata dosha. And often it's the vata dosha that goes out of balance first and then triggers the other doshas to go out of balance. So when um, this dosha is balanced, they are very creative, they're very intuitive, they're very friendly, they're energetic, they're sensitive, they're lots of fun. Um, but unfortunately, when this becomes out of balance, uh, someone who has a strong vata constitution can become very fearful, very stressed, anxious. They get a lot of digestive upsets, um, rapid, rapid mood swings, like constantly changing like the wind, um, a lot of scattered thoughts, a lot of scattered talk, and they can think too quickly. And so um, what they're trying to articulate can sort of become all jumbled because they're thinking too quick for the way that they can actually articulate the words. Um, they can find themselves having a lot of insomnia at night as well, not being able to sleep and just feeling generally ungrounded, um, instability and a lot of worry going on. So the causes of a vata imbalance is overdoing things and overcommitting to things. Any excess stress in life will create this vata imbalance and overstimulation. So like in the modern world, it's so hard not to have a vata imbalance, to be honest, a lot of the time because we're so overstimulated. Instead of like bringing our senses within us and practicing pratyahara, we're constantly being drawn out and our senses are being pulled to the external world. So, you know, we might be flicking on our phone whilst we're eating, whilst the TV or radio is in the background and then replying to a million emails and then where you know the taste of the food so that stimulates that sense and smelling something and hearing you know all the background noise whilst our eyes are busy reading stuff it's like we're constantly just firing those sense organs and that creates that central nervous system disruption and that vata dosha can become right out of balance and as I mentioned, a lot of travel, like especially if you uh, are traveling in airplanes because you're obviously in the ether, a lot of air, a lot of travel, although um, Vata people really love the travel, it can put them out of balance. 
out of routine. Um, and cold, windy weather, as I mentioned, that's uh, very Vata triggering, as well as any big life transition. So even um, when we give birth to a child, that is a really big Vata provoking activity in, and big transition in our life. So these big transitions will start to stimulate that Vata dosha. So to balance our Vata dosha, we need routine. And unfortunately, Vata, they don't generally like routine because they love to go with the flow and, um, yeah, just be those free spirits. But what they need is that grounding because they've got too much of that ether and that air element. So they need to be grounded. And the um, our routine or dinacharya, as we call it in Ayurveda, that helps keeps us grounded. So it doesn't need to be long, but it needs to give us some settling of the central nervous system so that the vata dosha doesn't explode, basically. Um, warm food so warm cooked food much better for your digestion it's also nourishing and grounding and just going out and grounding yourself in nature so putting your feet on the on the earth um, and doing anything that's grounding like some slow yin yoga meditations anything that can keep us really um, centered is what we need to do if the vata dosha is imbalanced so the next dosha is the pitta dosha and pitta is made up of the fire and the water elements. So the uh, mind body characteristics of a pitta dosha, generally they have the average um, frame, like an, a muscular build often. They can be quite strong and they have like really fast metabolisms because they've got that fire to burn, you know, burn through their metabolism. They often get really hangry. So like hungry, angry if they miss a meal so they can get blood sugar instability and um, having that fiery, more fiery temper. If they get really hungry, they can start to be like, get jittery and yeah, annoyed. <laughs> um, any acidic foods can cause a lot of heartburn and reflux. So they should really avoid oily fried foods and as this can cause stomach upset. They often um, are really warm to touch. You know, one of my, I've got twin boys and one of my sons is like so pitta. He's always running hot. He's really warm. He's really passionate. He's really determined, like over-determined. Um, and he loves like more cooling foods. And the other one is very bad. He's very creative. He's like, we, we say, oh, geez, Chris has gone up into cruise land. And he's like up in his head a lot of the time. He's very beautiful, very social. Um, they're both beautiful boys, but, but he runs more cool as well. So even twins, we can have um, these very unique fingerprints of our Ayurvedic dosha. So a pitta dosha, they're very strong-minded, very determined. They have a good um, willpower. They also have really strong immune system. So when you're working with a pitta client, they're actually, they can be really good to work with because they generally love to follow the steps that you give them. They love structure and they'll go away and they will do everything. Um, sometimes they can be, if their pitta is out of balance, they can be a little too structured and they're like, no, but now what, now what? And like what step by step really, really clearly. So you've also got to watch that part as well. They're very goal orientated. So they love like a to-do list to tick off and they can be workaholics. Um, they enjoy being in a position of authority and do make really good um, leaders as well. When they're balanced, they have that very clear perception and a really sharp intellect. So they make good leaders, doctors, teachers, um, anyone in sort of that authoritarian position when they're in balance, that is. <laughs> and they can become really frustrated if they don't feel connected to their purpose. So if they don't feel like they are making a difference or creating an impact or feel connected to a purpose, they can become really irritated and really frustrated because that deep sense of purpose is, is really meaningful to them. They're very passionate and intellectually sharp. They're very strong-minded, as I mentioned. And they have a good understanding and clear perception when they're balanced. So when um, a pitta person is doing really well, like in a really beautiful balanced state, they digest their food well, their thoughts and their emotions well, they have a glowing complex, they're pro um, productive, they're positive, they're confident, they're passionate, they're determined, and they have a really clear vision. 
So as I mentioned, there are five subdoshas to each of the doshas. And one of the subdoshas of pitta is being able to intellectually process our thought patterns and our belief patterns. So when that is balanced, then you have that really clear mental um, aspect as well. When imbalanced, they can become very judgmental, fiery, angry, irritable. Like if you think about all that heat just building up in them, um, they can experience a lot of skin uh, skin disorders, like more the oily skin disorders, such as like the acne, the dry flaky skin is more vata because that's drying, whereas pitta is hot and oily. So when we say the water aspect in pitta, it's more that warm, oily aspect because we've got to remember the gunas of the water. So as opposed to the water aspect of kapha, which we'll speak about later. Um, they can get a lot of inflammatory diseases within the body, frustration, stubborn, and they can become really highly perfectionists. And that can be really hard for them to break because they've got that driven personality and they need everything to be quite perfect. So the causes um, of a, a pitta imbalance is overwork, fixation on finishing tasks, like just going, no, I've got to do it, I've got to do it. And they can't like sort of just allow themselves to think outside of the box or just flow. They often have that very masculine energy and sometimes they need more of that feminine energy to come in in that flow state. They put themselves under a lot of pressure um, and too much heat obviously can also increase that fire element. So that can create a lot of imbalance. Fasting, really prolonged fasting can create imbalance and also for a vata person um, increase a period of fasting can as well it makes them very lightheaded very dizzy uh, and again just that perfectionism nature of pitta like too much of that will send them into burnout mode so to balance pitta you want regular meals cooling foods calming activities mindfulness and daily exercise like pitta do although it can generate heat they do need to move their body but in a gentle way so we have to watch with a pizza person that when they're going to do like some daily ex exercise they're not being too competitive because com competition is like a big sign of pizza dojo when they can become overly competitive so going for beautiful walks moving the the body in nature swimming surfing all of these things are fantastic for the pizza dosha And lastly, we have the kapha dosha. So the kapha mind-body characteristics, so they usually have a larger bone structure. They can be prone to more excess weight and overeating and have a slower metabolism. They're often bloated, but different from how a vata bloats. Like a vata is very gassy and airy and has like these big balloon sort of stomach. Whereas um, a kapha bloating feels really heavy and really full in the stomach. They're prone to a lot of water retention. So um, the elements that make up kapha are earth and water. They have, when they're balanced, they have really good stamina and endurance. So they actually make excellent endurance athletes or like any athlete that requires strength because they have that earth stability. So when they're balanced, they, they are really fantastic athletes. They can appear stocky in nature around medium height. They're prone to a lot of accumulation of fluid in the body, including the mucus. So a lot of lung congestion, it, it, that if there's really sticky phlegm in the, the lungs, then that's a kapha um, disorder that we have to treat. Whereas a vata lung would be very that really dry, coarse cough. So even if you're a very vata pitta person, but you came to see me in my clinic because you had a lot of congestions and moisture in the lungs, then we're still treating the kapha dosha because we need to treat the imbalanced dosha. Even though you might be more vata pitta mind body in general, we have to treat the imbalanced state. And this is why the doshas can become a little bit confusing to people who are especially new to Ayurveda because we like to identify ourselves with the doshas too much, but the doshas are ever changing. Your vikruti is anyway, and you always treat the imbalanced state. So it's really important not to identify yourself as being a dosha, but noticing that dosha within you in any given time, maybe being out of balance. And this is why I teach in my Ayurveda Alchemist program to really learn the elements because people don't generally get as 
um, as emotionally attached to being an element like, oh, I'm so water, I'm so earth, or I'm so air, you know? So it's really important to understand we all have all three doshas. They vary, that's our vikruti. Our prakruti is our natural state, what we're born with, but the one that we treat is our vikruti, the imbalanced state. So going back to uh, kapha, they are, they like security and they like that comfort, that very earthy sort of like stability in their life. They can be very nurturing, very generous. They make really beautiful friends and partners. Um, they're strong, consistent and reliable. And they love, they really have deep relationships. They love love, you know, they love compassion and love and romance. They can be stubborn though, and they don't like to change their ways because they like to be stuck like the earth, you know, and earth and water together makes that cohesiveness. So it is hard for them to change their ways often. They usually have um, a lot more slower speech. So not like me, <laughs> a lot of the spiritual teachers who speak really slow, they are, um, you know, nurturing and soft, they're very kapha, whereas I'm very vata, speaking with my hands and <laughs> speaking quickly. Um, so they can also have slower thought patterns, but not in the way that is, is a bad way. It's like they process things and take a little while to maybe come to a conclusion or they think things through a lot better. Whereas a Vata person will be like, oh yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. Yeah, all of it. Awesome. And then they go, oh, why'd they do that? A pit is very like direct and sharp and intellect. Whereas a Kapha is like, hmm, I'm going to think about it, weigh out the pros and cons and then process it. They're just a little bit more slow in their thought pattern and making decisions. So they make their decisions very carefully. Whereas Vata doesn't usually make their decisions very carefully. Um, not all the time. Like this is just, you know, when these imbalanced states are happening and a Pitha is very strong-minded with their decisions. Um, so when they're balanced, they have a lot of stamina, they're strong, they're loving, they're caring, they're forgiving, they're reliable, and they're actually, from an Ayurvedic perspective, seen as one of the healthiest doshas when they're balanced, right? Um, they, When they're not balanced, they can have a really unhealthy attachment or possessiveness. They have inertia, inertia mentally and physically. They can be prone to more depression, lethargy, greediness, laziness, and mental cloudiness because all of that heavy, earthy qualities can become too heavy, okay? So that's when we bring in the like attracts like and opposites decrease or balance each other out. So we need to bring more lightness into the kapha dosha when they're at an imbalanced state. So causes would be overeating, heavy oily foods, cold environments, um, lethargy and too much relaxing and grounding activities. So to balance it out, they want you want regular exercise, like a kapha dosha really needs to move. They need to get movement in their body and in their mind. Um, and just generate some fire. So there's some breath work that's really good, like the Kapalabhati breathing, breath of fire, uh, stimulate the mind and the body um, throughout the day. They want to have more light, warm and dry foods and a routine for all of their meals, but will definitely limit snacking throughout the day. So that is the three doshas, Vata, Pitta and Kapha. I hope, um, yeah, you might be able to be thinking, which dosha am I today or what dosha is playing out with me today? Which one is imbalanced or what am I generally most like? So I would love to know, um, yeah, which dosha resonates with you the most. Remember, we do have all three just in varying degrees and you will see them play out throughout your life. And just because you have um, maybe more of a vata body type doesn't mean you can't have more of a, a, pitta, a pitta mind and you would be a vata pitta dosha. So they, yeah, we have all three doshas within us. It's really important not to get too attached to what we are, but it is really, really wonderful to start to understand yourself on a deeper level when you can really understand the doshas and the elements. Tomorrow, I will be talking about Dhinacharya, the Ayurvedic routine and nutrition, and that will complete our five-part mini-series. So thank you so much for joining me. If you have any questions, please reach out. And once again, if this is resonating with you and you would love to go on a deep dive of personal development journey 
or even to uplift your business with Ayurvedic principles, then please reach out about the Ayurveda Alchemist program. We are taking enrollments at the moment and I would love for you to come along on the journey and share the wisdom of Ayurveda. Namaste, beautiful people.